Hey everybody, Steve here, back on the project. Uh, what we're going to tackle today is putting on the front suspension, the Global West coilover um, conversion, and the tubular head arms. So let's get rolling. So here are the components. On the left is the lower control arm, then the upper control arm, the new spring, and then that's the coilover shock. Uh, see how that assembles a little bit later, and that's the hardware. Uh, again, all from Global West. Um, seems like some really nice stuff. So I think we'll start by getting the lower control arm on. And I'll take a mention is um, uh, Global West came with some really nice instructions here to get everything put on. Uh, there's some great videos online that they that they put together out on YouTube. Uh, but I would highly recommend you doing do a job like this to get a uh, assembly manual. Uh, this is the one for my car um, because you don't get all the torque specs and stuff with the Global West. Uh, instructions, uh, but they will be in here. So, highly recommend it. Control arm. Put the pivot points here. Alright. Pin one pin started. And then get the other one in here. One thing to note, and this is not in the um, Global West instructions, is, and but out of the assembly manuals, is these bolts have to go in with head side to the front. I, I'm not sure why, but that's what it says they need to do. So a little persuasion, and they should go out in. One, two, washer, and a crimp nut on the back side. Okay, so I'm just going to snug these up. I'm not going to torque them down. Although, Global West says that you can go ahead and torque these down without the car being at ride height. But typically, suspension pieces, you uh, don't tighten them down and torque them until you're at ride height. Um, so this thing still swings nice and free. Um, even though the Del Loom bushings on the bottom here, you can do that, I still have to have it at ride height for everything else, the sway bar links and all that stuff. So I'm gonna do all that when it's at ride height. So uh, we move to the upper, the upper arm here. Um, one thing we have to do first is remove the old um, rubber bump stop from the uh, original arms. On the Global West setup, they actually put the bump stop on the bottom of the arm. So we'll get to removing that. So assembly of the top arm is really pretty simple. You've got these studs here and it basically, basically just slips over the tops of those. With a little bit of dissuasion, I think. Rubber mallet. Now when I put this back together, I have the I have all the original shims that were in here before. Um, I'm going to put those back in where they were. This whole front's going to have to be a line. I'm sure they'll have to change it, but at least this will get it halfway closed. So these shims basically slip in here like that in between the shaft and the frame. And then it just gets tightened down around it. So let me get these in place and then we'll get this tightened down. So we've got the shims in place. So now it's just a matter of putting on some washers. And then the locking nuts. And these are these locking nuts. They're like a like a crimp nut. Um, let me see if I don't know if you can see it, but it's uh, they're almost like ovalized. Um, this is what's all going on the whole front suspension. Global West instructions, but again, I got out of my manual, is that these need to be torqued down to 50 foot pounds. So the first thing you have to do is put this locking collar on, and there's a uh, like a boss on it that goes to the top. And yeah, a lot of this will make sense once I get it all put together. So you wind that on down, wind it all the way down. And then there's this adjusting collar, which is this piece here, that gets wound down onto this also. 
Uh, Viking says that your warranty is void if you don't use um, anti-seize on this. Global West says they put it together dry. Um, I'm going to go with what Viking says and I'm going to put some anti-seize on there. The reason Global West says no is because it can attract dirt and dig up the threads more if you're going to do a lot of adjusting after it's on the car. I'm not going to do a lot of adjusting after it's on the car. One of the main reasons I bought these is so I could adjust my ride height. Um, and uh, uh, that I'm going to you know, kind of do once and that's it. I'll be messing around with this when I'm at the track. Uh, but. That's not to have anything to wound it. on this oh. direction. Is you put just a regular washer on here. Put your thrust washer on top of that. Then another regular washer. So that thrust washer is in between there. Okay, The spring sits on here like this. Okay, So you can see as you adjust these collars up, okay, it adjusts where the spring rides and that's how you get your different ride height. Then this part goes up into the frame just like a normal coil spring. So uh, let's go get this thing put on the car. Okay, like any other shock on the top, need to put some rubber bushings. So that's the first thing we'll do. Okay, get those on her. Then for this guy, you put that spring on top of those washers and thrust washer. Then all this goes up into the frame, just like you would a normal spring, so to speak. There we go. And you put rubber. Washer. And a nut. Again, just like you would any other shock. Right now, all we're trying to do is get this thing held up in there. There we okay, go. so now the spring on the shock is uh, just being held up in there by the top nut. Next step is to get the shock bolted into the um, onto the lower control arm to go through those holes there. So we'll grab this supply. Let's see if it's in here. Okay, so we'll basically uh, torque those down. One thing to note, the adjustment for the rebound and compression, those go to the outside. Make sure you do that. And before you totally tighten these down, you want to make sure you get the shock centered in the hole here. Um, so I'm going to just... Because oh, no these holes are slotted. Uh, so next step, we'll put the spindle in. Um, you remember this? This is the, uh, the one I painted way back when. Let me tag off here. Okay, so it fits up here, the top, and there's a castle nut that goes on. Up to the spindle. We'll just do that with a jack. And again, so much easier to do this with this coilover shock here as opposed to trying to do it with, um, with uh, uh, when the spring is separate. Uh, get this one up here. Just a little Old joint. Let's cut that out. There we go. We should be able to jack this right up onto that. Self center. Okay, let me get a nut wound on this thing. Before you start getting everything tightened up with the spindle, um, you should finish up putting the top of the shock on. Remember, I just put that on finger tight um, just to hold it up in there. So I'm gonna put a little bit of preload on that on that rubber till I see it just starting to mush them out a little bit past the washer or out to the washer, I should say. And 
I see that. Stop there. And then put the lock nut on. So how the spring adjusts is it comes, the shock comes with this spanner wrench. And these uh, little teeth that are on these rings, all you have to do is put the spanner wrench in there and then start turning. So per Global West, the upper um, castle nut for the upper ball joint is 60 foot pounds and the lower is 90 foot pounds. So I'm just going to kind of get these tightened up. So I'm going to torque for a set of 60 foot pounds. I'll do the upper. So now I need to do the lower. My digit torque wrench does not go up to 90, so I have to use my old fashioned beam here. And put your counter pins in. Once you get the castle nuts lined up. So that's basically it. Counter pins are in. It's all set in place. Repeat on the so other there side. You have it. Both sides are done. Um, nice kit. Goes together well. Um, I would definitely use that anti seize on the uh, on the coilover um, uh, and go with what the Viking instructions were. Uh, next step will be to start getting all the spindle hardware on and the rest of the front suspension. So stay tuned.